Hey everyone, so welcome back. So now I'm going to talk about the coordinate rotations that we need to work with the Kitty data set. And it may seem like a lot, but just, just bear with me. I'm going to try to break it down and put it in an easy way for you all to understand. So the main thing that we want to do for this is we have 3D LiDAR data, which I, will, I also call, I interchange Vela with LiDAR in this notebook, and we want to rotate it to a camera. Uh, for simplicity, we have four cameras, two are gray and two are RGB. We're going to translate everything to the left RGB camera. And we can see right here in this diagram of the Kitty, um, the Kitty um, Ego vehicle, we have these four cameras right here. We want to translate everything from this Velodyne scanner to camera zero, to camera two, and then finally to the camera two image plane. So to summarize that, we have a point out here in 3D space, and we know we can go X, Y, Z distance away and get to that point. So if we want to go from the camera zero and go X, Y, Z distance point, we need to do a translation. Same if we want to go from camera two, we need to do another translation to go a different X, Y, Z distances away to get, that, to, get to that point in physical space. And then finally, once we have that point in physical space relative to camera two, we're going to do what's called a projection transformation by using a camera matrix to project that matrix onto the 2D plane. Now, you can go to this Wikipedia. I have it linked in the notebook. Um, you can see right here. Um, it's basically got intrinsic and extrinsic, internal and external parameters that are derived, that are obtained through camera calibration that will allow us to get a 3D point onto image onto our camera space. So I'll go through this in a little bit more detail. So what we're going to do first of all is we're going to do a rigid body transformation to translate from the Velodyne lidar to camera zero. So what a rigid body transformation is, is essentially a 3D rotation and a 3D transformation. And we could actually combine the rotation or translation. We can combine the translation and rotation into a single matrix. And I have an example of this here. And this rotation right here is this three by three matrix, depending on whether it's column rank or row rank, um, each column is going to be for each XYZ point, And then each scalar of this, translation vector is going to be for each XYZ point. So we're going to, we could do that. So to go from now, now that we, to go from camera zero to camera two, we do the same thing. So it's going to be a different rigid transformation matrix. And then next we can't just do the projection. We actually have to do what's called a rectification transformation. It's just a rotation and it basically allows us allows um, two stereo images to be on the same reference plane. So if you can see this example right here with two stereo cameras or stereo, that are taking two stereo images, this dotted um, frame right here is the raw image. And we have a point P that's on a straight horizontal line in the left image, but the line, but its corresponding line that without, without rectification, the corresponding line in the right image is slanted. So what rectification does is just a 3D rotation, and essentially we get these these um, bold image frames here, and it allows us to if we have a line a, a object on this line in the left image, if we want to find the the same object in the corresponding right image, all we have to do is search on this line, and it makes this um it's called the disparity problem to get the difference between an object. And the left image, the right image, it makes solving for the disparity problem a lot easier. But we won't get into those details in this notebook. So after the rectification transformation, we can finally apply the camera projection transformation that we just talked about. And this basically takes a 3D point to a 2D image space. And we're going to denote the points in 2D image space as U and V. So U will be the horizontal and V will be the vertical. And we'll also include Z if we have depth info. Even though we're talking about 2D space, just know that U and V represent um, the, the plane on 2D space and Z is its corresponding depth in the real world. So to do these transformations, you might have noticed that we can't take a three by four matrix and just multiply it by a three by one vector. We're gonna have to do something different and how to, how to do this is we're gonna 
go into what we call homogeneous coordinates. And I have a link that provides a little bit more detail, but essentially what homogeneous coordinates are is we, we're going to work in a higher dimensional space. So basically, if we have an x, y, z vector, we're just going to add a 1 to it. And likewise with the rotation matrix, we're going to under our rotate or translation matrix under the rotations we're going to add zeros and under the translations we're going to add one and this one needs to match this one right here so most of the you could use any number you want most people just use one because it makes things a lot easier so to do our lidar to camera transformation we do need to apply four rotation matrices to go to the camera so this X vector right here could be a point that's obtained through real LiDAR data. So if you want to take that point to the image plane, we need to go from the LiDAR to the camera zero reference. So this is a 3D point in the real world relative to the LiDAR to a 3D point in the real world relative to camera zero. And we need to go to cam from camera zero to camera two. So a 3D point relative to camera two. We're still in 3D. And now we need to go from, this should be reference 2, I'll fix that later, but um, but um, so we need to go from camera 2 to the rectified version of camera 2, it's just a rotation, and to do this, we have all of these matrices in homogeneous form, we're just going to add zeros for the translation, since we're not translating anything. And then finally, once we get to the rectified, version, we can go from the 3D point to the 2D point using this P matrix. So all of these matrices are provided in the Kitty data set, and they make things a lot easier to work with. And we can actually compose these transformations just by multiplying these matrices together into a single matrix, which we'll call Velo to Cam2, which takes us from the 3D point in LiDAR to a 2D UVZ point on camera 2. And finally, once we get this um, Y tilde right here, which is denoted for homogeneous coordinates, we'll have U tilde, V tilde, the real depth information Z in this one right here. So to get the actual U and V, we just need to normalize U tilde and V tilde by Z right here. And then we can just drop the one. And this will give us the true UVZ coordinate locations. So we can actually use this information to go from 2D camera space to 3D LiDAR space, assuming that we have our depth value Z. So if we were to rotate back to LiDAR space, we can take this, take this matrix, ensure that it is in a homogeneous representation, and then we can invert it and, and multiply it by the homogeneous representation of our UVZ vector and and we'll get the homogeneous representation of our 3D space vector. And once again, to go to homogeneous representation for this transformation, we do need to undo this normalization that we did. So we need to multiply U and V by Z, and then we add Z and 1 to get our 4D vector. So we can also go to IMU, which is our the location of our navigation system. I refer to the IMU in this notebook and in this matrix notation. So all we got to do is we have a, we just need to add this matrix right here called IMU to Velo. And this is, comes with, comes with the, comes with the kitty data. And we basically just add it to our transformation and we could do the same, same thing to go back. And so that's, that's pretty straightforward. Basically the same thing, just add a different, add another matrix to the composition. And finally, we need to go to IMU to geodetic. So if we want to know where a vehicle or object or whatever we do is at in the real world without, you know, relative to say something else, we can also convert this to lat long and out. So, and we could do this because our IMU and our navigation system actually gives us the current lat long and out of the vehicle. So, if we do, if we want to do this, we need to convert the XYZ Cartesian data to slant range, azimuth, and elevation. And we could do it with these equations here. And then from the slant range, azimuth, 
and elevation and our lat long and out, we could actually use a built-in Python library to convert this XYZ value to lat long and out in the real world. So that's all for this video. Um, after this, we're going to read in the data and get straight to it. So I'll see you then. See you later.